Right. So let me take you to. So I gave you kind of an introduction to the binomial theorem. Uh, we uh, we discussed what it is all about, what this theorem would give us, uh, and we were leading up to the theorem. And what we the exercise that we were doing last time was, we were kind of trying to uh, explore uh, the pattern uh, in a binomial expansion ourselves. Now the binomial theorem will tell you how to expand a whole number power of a of a binomial. Uh, and uh, so we were on our way uh, to building up to that. So just to pick up from where we um, left last time, uh, let me give you a um, power of a binomial. Let's see whether you can uh, expand it. Just now, we still didn't learn the theorem, but uh, uh, even with what we discussed, you can expand um, not very high powers of a binomial, but you can expand maybe less than 10 powers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, up to 10 maybe. Uh, I think the last uh, uh, expansion we did was power, um, maybe power seven. Let us try, let us try. Can you try, is the, uh, is the paper uh, lit up enough? Is the brightness enough or do you want me to brighten it? I think that, should, that is better, right? Okay, uh, can you try expanding? Let's take now again, I'm taking uh, the binomial to be A plus B. That could represent any binomial. The A and the B that I'm writing here represent any two terms. So we will later go into specific examples where A might be a number and B might be an X term, right? We are still, we are just writing in general. So let our binomial be A plus B. This we are doing right now for uh, one, one reason is for convenience. And the other reason we are looking at it in general. Okay. So I'm not taking specific examples. I'm taking a general looking A and B, general binomial. And let's take the power. What power did I say? Shall we try power nine? Now, if you remember, this is just to see whether you remember what we uh, what we noticed last time in these patterns. Uh, the first thing, if you remember, that you have to do is you have to build that Pascal's triangle that I uh, gave you last time up to the ninth, ninth row because those numbers would give you the coefficients of your terms. Now, my first question, when I expand this, uh, power nine of above this binomial, how many terms do you expect there to be? How many terms would this have? When the power is nine, there would be how many terms in the expansion? Akitni, yes? Uh, ten, ten. ten. Ten terms, very good one more than the power number there will be that many terms if you are taking the power three there will be four terms power five there will be six terms so there are going to be 10 terms so for the 10 terms there would there have to be 10 coefficients one thing we know is that the two end terms that means the first term and the tenth term coefficients are one one you hope you remember that and if you come one this way inwards, that means the second term and the ninth term would have what number? Coefficient. Do you remember this? Okay, let us make the, uh, let us uh, draw the Pascal's triangle. I will draw it here. You start with one. I'm going to write a one right in the middle. That corresponds to power zero. Now we are talking about whole number powers. So what's the first whole number? Zero, power zero. So power, if the power is zero, there would be one term and the coefficient of that one term is one. Power one, power one, there will be two terms and the two coefficients would be one, one. 
power two, there will be three terms and the coefficients of the three terms would be one, two, one. Power three, there would be four terms. The coefficients would be one, three, three, one. Four terms. One, four, six, four, one. Power five. Power five, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Power six, one, six, fifteen, twenty, fifteen, six, one. I hope you remember how I'm building these rows. I'm adding the top two numbers to get this. Power seven, there will be eight terms. So there are eight coefficients. One, seven, uh, what is this? 21, what is this? 35, 35, 21, seven, one. Power eight, I need to go up to nine to get the numbers. One, eight, 28, 56, uh, 70, 56, uh, 28, 8, 1. Did you follow that? Is that right? Here I come to the ninth power. The coefficients of the 10 terms, when you expand a binomial to the power of n, sorry, power of 9, are 1, There's a lagging, okay. One, nine, 36. Whew, and let's add this, uh, four, 84, 126, 126, 84, 36, nine and one. Okay, now you might be thinking, do we have to do this? So if, uh, if, I, if I ask you to raise a binomial, say to the power of 20, do I have to keep doing this until I get to the, to the, to the you know, whatever the row? No you, no, you don't. The binomial theorem tells you an easier way to get these numbers. But just for now, I'm showing you how you can do it even with the Pascal's triangle. Now here are my coefficients. Now I'm going to write that, that write that um, binomial expansion. Okay, so now one thing that you have uh, the, a couple of things that we noticed last time were that the two end terms, the first and the last term, always have coefficient one one, and then and then the coefficients are symmetric. Did you notice that? Take any row, one, seven. 21, 35. When you come this way, there is a symmetry. It's symmetrical, left, right. The coefficients are symmetrical, right? 1, 1, 9, 9, 36, 36, 84, 84, 126, 126. They go like that. And the end coefficients are always 1, 1. And the second coefficients, 1 inward, if, if you come 1 inward from both sides, that coefficient is the power number. Did you notice that? Let me highlight. If your power is nine, the second coefficient is nine. Second from the end. Second from the end. See, if the power number is eight, the second from the end is eight, eight. Seven, seven, seven. Five, sorry, six, six, six. Five, five, five. When it is four, four, four. When it is three, three, three. When it is two, the middle one is two. When it is one, it's just just one. See the it's beautiful pattern that is. Okay. So, um, how do we write this? Can you try writing this? How do we do it? If both of you can talk, that would be really nice. Then I can see whether you got this. So these numbers, these 1, 9, 36, these numbers are the coefficients of the 10 terms. There are 10 numbers here. So if I, now I'm going to write the first term. 
coefficient is 1 now when the coefficient is 1 you don't write the 1 but i'm writing it just just to see okay 1 and then you take any one or usually we take this first uh, first thing in your binomial there are two things in my case here i have a and b you take the first thing and write the highest power it can take now this is power 9 so it will start with a to the power of 9 and then b would start with the smallest power 0 one would start with the highest power other one would start with the lowest power what do i mean by highest and lowest here highest would be this power itself lowest is zero that's it i wrote my first term second term plus this second coefficient which is nine over here okay nine then power of a is going to go down one at a time by by one at a time and the power of b is going to go up by one at a time so a to the power of eight drop by one b to the power of one increase by one i wrote my second term third term plus my third coefficient is 36 so i write 36 a i drop the a power by another one a to the power of seven increase the power of b by one b to the power of two that's my third term do you understand this i can keep going and i and complete all 10 terms did you i, I i'm just doing this until i'm i'm sure that you have seen this pattern clearly akitmi anumasha is this clear to you can you try writing like two more terms Plus uh, huh? 84. Plus 84. A to the power 6. Huh? B to the power 3. Very good. Very good, Akitmi. Plus, Umasha, can you try the next term? I will write it. 126. 126. A to the power 5. Good. B to the power 4. Very good, b to the power of four. Okay, so you, you got it right and you can go on, you can complete it if you want. Now, let me ask you something. Would it make a difference if I, now how do I know now, you, you know that this a plus b could have been written as b plus a. How do I know which, which thing out of the two I start with the highest power and which thing I start with the lowest power? How do I know that? Could I have take? Could I have started by putting b to the power of nine and a to the power of zero here and continued? Could I have done it that way? Would I get the same thing? What do you think? No. No. The answer would be different. Akitmi thinks the answer would be different. Umasha, what do you think? Miss, I didn't get what you said. Now, if I now I I I started here. I put the highest power for A first. Now, how did I pick which one, which one starts with the highest power and which one starts with the lowest power? Because this, this, uh, this, this same thing, if I wrote B plus A, it's the same thing, A plus B is same as B plus A. If I had written the binomial with the two terms swapped, but it's the same thing, then I would write here, would it be right b to, i would start with with um b b having the highest power and a having zero would it be the same would it does it matter how do i know which uh, to which one i put the highest power first and to which one i put zero first how do i know is it random or is it like how what do you think about that think about think about that a bit because if i had given you a plus instead of a plus b if i had given you b plus a i think you would do one you would do, you would go b to the power of nine a to the power of zero and continued that way would the two expansions be different then 
teacher answers are same, but it's to the other side. Like, so the what do you mean by that? Like the last terms are to the first. Ah, very good. You will get the same expansion, but from end to beginning. The 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 last term in this term in this expansion would be what what I'm what I'm saying. If you complete, so you that means it doesn't matter which one you start with the highest power and which one you start with the lowest power. The only difference would be you would be getting the same expansion from end to the beginning. The 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 terms in the other order. Okay. Do you understand that? Did you understand that, what I just said? So if I, did you understand? Yes, miss. Okay. Right? So it doesn't matter. I could have, even when it, it was given to me like this, I could have started with B to the power of 9 and A to the power of 0. And that is the last term in this expansion. And I would be coming backwards in the terms if I did that. Because of, it happens because of the symmetry. You can go this way or you can, it's the same thing. Okay. Um, right. So um, let us let us discuss a bit more about, about this before we start writing. Um, so let me remind you again the things that we observed in this pattern. Number one, there are always one more than the power number many terms in the expansion. Number two, the coefficients, the coefficient numbers are embedded in this Pascal's triangle. Nice. Number three, the coefficients have a symmetry. Number four, the end terms coefficients are always one, one. Number five, the, uh, the, the first inside the two terms have the power number coefficient. Power number coefficient. Okay. Uh, another observation. Uh, the, the powers of one of your thing in the binomial start with the highest power and descend. The other one starts with the lowest power zero and ascend. Okay. Um, here's another observation. Any term, if you take any term, let me circle the terms. Here's my first term, second term, third term and so on. Any term has, I can say, like three components in it. Three, it is made out of three things. The coefficient, we call this the coefficient. One, this number is called the, not just the coefficient, it's called the binomial coefficient, right? Made out of the coefficient and a power of A, power of A, here, power of A, all the terms have that. Power of A, my coefficient here must be like that. Power of A and a power of B. Each term has these three components. Okay, is that right? What I'm, is, is what I'm saying right? Each of the terms in your expansion are made out of three parts. You have the binomial coefficient, that is the number that comes from the Pascal's triangle. And you have a power of your first thing here, power of your first thing, and power of your second thing. Okay? So that's another observation. I can say all terms have that thing in common, have that property in common. They are all made out of three parts. And here's another thing. If you add the two powers here, if you add these two powers in any term, add the two powers, what is it equal to? 9 and 0 is 9. 8 and 1 is 9. 7 and 2 is 9, 6 and 3 is 9, 5 and 4 is 9. The two powers of the two parts add up to the power number. Okay? Anything else? I'm just trying to point out everything that I'm seeing here. 
I think that's all. Okay. Now we are one step away from the theorem. You all almost have it. The only difference between what you know so far and the binomial theorem is it gives you a little formula to compute these coefficients. You don't have to draw up a Pascal's triangle to get the binomial coefficients. They can be computed using the calculator. There, there is a little formula. That's the only extra thing that the binomial theorem gives you. Okay, so let us now write the uh, write the note. If you need this, I mean, let me put some dots here. I did not. I have not completed the uh, completed the uh, uh, expansion. I would leave. I will leave some space for the middle terms, and maybe I will write the last last two terms. Uh, that means the one that has nine. That would be nine a one b eight, and the last term would be one a zero and b nine. There you go. I kind of completed it, but I skipped a few terms in the in between. Okay. So if you like, if you want, you can copy this. Um, so this is this is all part of that we were doing an exercise uh, to explore the pattern in a binomial expansion that would lead us to the binomial theorem. Okay, uh, I, I don't think we wrote uh, the observations. Uh, are you copying this or can I, can I start dictating the note? Are you copying this example? Do you want to copy this example? And maybe put these colors. It's very the using colors to identify these patterns is very useful. Please do, do that if you, if you have colors, the, the colors let you see the pattern. And the way I have circled things, that'll, that'll quickly, that'll um, help you to spot the pattern. Now I have circled the two powers to, 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 take, to bring your attention to that. The sum of those two is always nine. Okay, shall we start writing? Okay, miss. Okay, so uh, after you have written all this, start in a new line. Here are some observations. Here are some observations. Here are some observations. In these binomial expansions, here are some observations in these binomial expansions. Okay, let's put bullet points and write these things that we observed. First bullet point. If the power is n, if the power is n, if the power is n, there are blank terms, that many num that many terms, you, you fill the blank. There are blank terms in the expansion. How many? If the power is n, there are uh, how many terms in the expansion? n plus 1. Very good. There are n plus 1 terms in the expansion. Put a bracket around n plus 1. If the, if the power is n, there are n plus 1 many terms in the expansion. Second bullet point. Power n. I'm just uh, writing uh, in short these bullet points. If the power is n, there are n plus one number of terms. That's that's the first bullet point. Second bullet point. 
each term in the expansion has three parts or three things. Let's say things. Each term in the expansion has three things. What are those three? You have, I will put them each one in a, in, in a bracket. You have what is called the binomial coefficient. Then you have a power of A, a power of A and a power of B. Each of your terms have these three. They, they, are, um, they consist of these three. Binomial coefficient, a power of A, a power of B. Third bullet point. When the power of, when the power of, if I put A, it could be B also. When the power of, power of, when the power of A goes from N to zero, N to zero, starts from N, goes down to zero, when that happens to the powers of A, what happens to the powers of B? They go from zero to N. So when the power of A goes from N to zero, the power of B goes from zero to N. The power, that means the power of one goes down, the power of the other goes up. Next bullet. The coefficients are symmetric. The, let's say the binomial coefficients, the binomial coefficients are symmetric. And follow a pattern. And follow a pattern. Last week, did you copy the Pascal's triangle? Did you draw up this triangle last week in the note? We with terms or with terms? Without terms, just like, like that, like a triangle? No, right? You were just writing the expansions of? You, you were expanding a plus b to the power of zero, a plus b to the power of one. You expanded a couple of binomial powers, but you didn't write the, this is called the Pascal's triangle. You didn't draw this up, right? Uh, teacher, I drew it. You drew it, okay. Like I, I also drew it, teacher. Ah, you also drew it, okay. So you can, I mean, so that's what we are talking about in this bullet point. So let's write then that, that it is the uh, Pascal's triangle then. Um, uh, to the same point, you continue and write. Uh, um, the triangle of binomial coefficients, the triangle of binomial coefficients is called the Pascal's triangle. 
the triangle of binomial coefficients is called the Pascal's triangle. Okay, one more bullet point. The two powers of A and B in any term, the two powers of A and B in any term in the expansion add up to add up to n now we are always referring to n here as the power if n is the power okay add up to n which is the power number the two powers of A and B in any term in the expansion add up to N. Okay, now I will give you the binomial theorem, okay? So put this in a, I mean, let's write it and then put a box around it, okay? So here's the binomial theorem. Finally, we are going to write it down. Now, you will never be asked to write down the binomial theorem, right? That never happens in mathematics. They, people in, in mathematics papers, they don't say, write down the Pythagoras theorem. You, you don't have to memorize theorems. You have to know how to apply them, just like you know how to apply the Pythagoras theorem and find an unknown side of a right angle triangle. That's what you have to know. So we are writing down the binomial theorem. There's nothing to like memorize here, like, like, a, like a word to word memorization. Like even in physics, sometimes you buy heart theorems. Newton's first law, when an object like you, you memorize it. There's nothing like that here. Okay? You just have to understand the theorem and be able to apply it. So here goes it. Here goes binomial theorem. Okay, right. This is just a, that's my decoration. Okay. Maybe I should put one here too. Binomial theorem. There is a delay. Okay, right. If the two parts of a binomial, if the two parts of a binomial, if the two parts of a binomial are A and B, A and A and B in red, if the two parts of a binomial are A and B, A, A and B in red, A and B in red, comma, and is raised to a whole number power n, n in red, and is raised to a whole number power n, whole number power n. Then you have to know that your power could only be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. It can't be negative numbers, it can't be fractions or anything like that, whole numbers only. And is raised to a whole number power n, then the expansion is given by, then let's say then its expansion is given by, its expansion is given by A plus B to the power of N is equal to, 
Now you didn't ask me a certain question. By now, there has to be a question popping in your head. Can't we get a minus b? Then how would it be? Did you not? Did that question not come to your mind? Why do I always say a plus b? A binomial. It could be like. 2x plus 3, it could be plus in the middle, or it could, what if it is minus in the middle? Then, then, uh, then also is this theorem valid or what? So let's, let, we will see that, okay? A plus b to the power of n, here how it is, how it, how it's going. First, watch what I'm writing uh, before you copy it down. I told you that there is a little formula for the for the binomial coefficients. This is how you write that formula. I will put, write that in a different color. N zero. This is one note. There are two notations for it. I prefer this notation, so I'm writing in that notation. A to the power of N B to the power of zero plus Second term, n1, a to the power of n minus 1, b to the power of 1. Plus, let me write one more, n2, a to the power of n minus 2, b to the power of 2, plus, I will leave some dots and how, how this would expansion end, let me write the last term. Last term coefficient is written n, n. A to the power of zero, A will have exhausted B to the power of n and that's the, that's the end of it. Now the black, things that I have written, these rep, it's just a notation here. I will tell you what that is. Okay. This is a symbol that, that's, that symbol stands for something. It, it, it has a little formula to compute the binomial coefficient. Now you know that this is one, you know that this is one too. Okay, let's say where this notation, if you have n, now you, you, you see that all of them have the top number is n, 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 n. The bottom number goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n. So in general, if I say n r, let the bottom number be r, so r could be any number from 0 to n. What does this represent? It represents um, n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Now, this is why we learned the factorial uh, operation. And this is read as, how do you read this notation? This is read as, read as n choose, n choose r, or it is read as n, for choose we put c, n c r. NCR, we say NCR. So this is NC0, this is NC1, NC2, NCN, or N choose 0, N choose 1, N choose 2, and N choose N. Now you would, you should be thinking, where did that come from? Choose, what are we choosing here? This comes from some a topic called combinatorics, combinations and permutations. Uh, this n choose r, this formula tells you how many ways are there uh, that you can choose r number of objects out of n number of objects. This formula um, comes in 
that the same formula gives you the coefficients of a binomial expansion. Okay. Now, if this feels like too much to handle at once, just, just take it easy. We will slowly um, digest it and, and dissect it. Okay. So when we see a couple of examples, you will understand. So that is the binomial theorem. You can put a big box around that. And in your calculators, you have an NCR button. Let me get my calculator and show you the button. Okay, so where it is will depend on the type of calculator you have. Uh, my NCR is um, above the division button, above the division button. Let me try to show you. Can you take your calculator to your hand and check whether you can find, do you see NCR above my division button? NCR. Okay. So I have to press shift to get that. Okay. Now I will show you how to apply this formula. Suppose we now let us try writing an expansion using this theorem. Now I'm, uh, let me take a simple example. Example, and I'm going to use the binomial for uh, uh, this formula to get the binomial coefficients. Example, expand I'll say two plus x to the power of five. I want to say expand this, okay? So my a, my a is two, my b is x, and my n is five, okay? Now, if you think in terms of the Pascal triangle, you know that uh, you know how to get the, you already, you can look at your triangle and get the coefficients, but we, let's, let's try getting the coefficients using this formula. I just want to show you that. So I'm going to write two plus X to the power of five. Now the first term coefficient is one. I will put brackets. That's the coefficient. And then I would have two to the power of five and X to the power of zero. That's my first term, correct? Okay. My second term, I know already my second binomial coefficient is, shall we try anyway? Now I know this is one, but what is the formula that would come here? I should have written that, no? This is actually what? This is actually what? Let me write underneath. This is five, choose zero okay look at your look at the way i have we have written it in the binomial theorem n zero n choose zero n c zero n c one n c two n c up to finally n c n so this coefficient should come from my little formula five c zero that means you can manually compute it if you want. This means five factorial divided by zero factorial. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, you already know zero factorial is one. Zero factorial, then five minus zero factorial. You can compute it by hand, or but you can just use the button in the calculator. So how you would do it is, you have to start with, this is five choose, uh, five choose zero, right? You press five first, five, and then the NCR button, then it will show you a C, five C, five choose 
zero. Five choose zero. And when you press the equal sign, it'll say one. Did you understand? Am I stuck? Do you hear me? The document reader looks. Yes, ah, okay. Right. Then my second term, I know it is five. I know the coefficient is, okay, there's my hand. My hand is here. I have to, okay, that is a lag in the video. Anyway, uh, the, the second binomial coefficient I know is five because the power is five. And then this is two to the power of four and X to the power of one, but I should be able to get this from the formula. Five choose one. Five choose one. Let's try that. So I would press five and the NCR button and one, right? I would do five C one and press equals gives me five. That's a five. Do you see it like a two? Right? So it's five. My next coefficient, suppose I don't remember it. What do I have to press there? What do I have to press here in the calculator? Five choose two. Five choose zero, five choose one, five choose two. Let's see. Five choose two equals. Five choose two equals 10. So that is 10 times two to the power of three, x to the power of two. Okay. Did you understand this so far? Can you complete how many more terms I should write? There should be six terms, three more terms. Let me go down here. Uh, I don't have to compute the rest. I mean, the for the coefficients, because they will, rep the, due to symmetry, one, five, 10, and then one, five, 10 from the other side. But you can check whether that is correct. So I think the next term would have 10 as the coefficient, two to the power of two, x to the power of three, and then next would be five, two to the power of one, x to the power of four, and the last term would be one, two to the power of zero, and x to the power of five, and that's the end. But I know that this should be, this should come from five choose three, this should come from five choose two, and this should come from five choose five. You can check that from the calculator. And then if I simplify this expansion, I just wrote it out the, uh, how the binomial theorem tells me to do it. Now, if I just do it, uh, this is just two to the power of five. Two to the power of five is two to the power of, where's my power button? Two to the power of five is 32. 32 plus five times two to the power of four. Five times two to yes. the power of Yes. Okay. This term is five choose four, right? Oh, sorry, this is four. Thank you, Akitne. They go zero, one, two, three, four, five. And do you see this? This and this are the same. Five choose zero is equal to five choose five. Five choose one is equal to five choose four. Five choose two is equal to five choose three due to the symmetry. So five times two to the power of four is 80. 80 X plus 10 times two to the power of three. Again, 80 X squared plus 10 times two to the power of two, 40 X cube plus 10 x power four plus, uh, that's just a one x to the power of five. There you have the full expansion simplified.
Okay. Now make sure you understand every step. And also notice that the, the new coefficients of these terms have changed now because you, you, one of your, uh, your A in the expansion was a number. Your A in the binomial was a number. So the, now if you take each of your terms, now you can't see what the binomial coefficient was. Remember, only this is called binomial coefficient. When it gets simplified with the rest of the term, you get your full and final coefficient of the term. Now this is eight in a, that is not the binomial coefficient. Binomial, binomial coefficient of the second term was five. But the um, coefficient of the second term is 80 now. Do you understand the difference? So th that's why we call these binomial coefficient. This is the coefficient of the term. So the binomial coefficient of the third term was 10. The, bi the coefficient of the third term in the expansion turned out to be 80. Okay. Did you understand this? Okay, I'll give you one more example. Can I uh, turn the page? Yes, miss. Okay, example two. Write the first mm, first four terms in the expansion two X plus one to the power of 20. No, let me make it, let me make it 12. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. I am not, I don't want you to do the whole expansion. I just want the first four terms. First four terms. And let me also say in in descending powers of x, descending, D-E-S-C, descending powers of x. Now, why do I say that? This is an extra thing that I'm saying to, to, to fixate you, to take, to start with the powers of uh, this thing, this part with the highest, and then that has to drop. So powers of x must descend because if you take it the other way around, remember you can get the same same expansion from n to the beginning. So if, if I just say if write the first four terms, is it the first four terms from the beginning or from the end? I mean, this would this would make it the same for everyone. Twelve zero. 2x okay there i have written the first term can you continue Now, you don't have to write this. I'm, I just wrote it too, like to, to make it look complete. You already know this is one. 
and even the second one you know the co this coefficient is 12 so 12 c 1 is 12 12 c 0 is 1 Done? Let me slowly write it. Just put some dots. So one to any power is one, no need to write it. Twelve choose two. What is twelve? Choose two. Sixty-six. And two to the power of ten. Twelve choose, choose, choose three. Two to the power of nine. Simplify further. Huge numbers you are getting here. Last, uh, the fourth one is dot, dot, dot. Oops. There you have your first four terms in descending powers of x. Did you get all that? So I I made sure to write one step with the with the binomial coefficients like separately, and then only I uh, simplified it with the other number because when you have the normal coefficient, your binomial coefficient is hidden in that. So you could complete the whole expansion, right? Is this clear up to now? Only one more thing we have to learn in this? Yes, miss. Okay, very good. Now, so um, when they want to check whether you can apply the binomial theorem, this is what they would usually do. They would give a certain power of a binomial and ask you to write the first few terms. They won't ask you to do the whole thing. If you can do it, that could be checked by just getting you to write a first a few terms. So three first three terms, first, first two terms like that they give you. And let me add one more 
example with a minus sign in between. So example three, uh, example three. Again, uh, write the first three terms in the expansion. Um, let me take an example from the book. Yet, okay. Two A minus three B to the power of five. I want you to write only the first three terms. 2a minus 3b. What do you do now? In the binomial theorem, it only says how to do a plus b. What do we do? Any, um, any ideas what we should do? How we should tackle this? 2a minus 3b can be written with a plus sign in between. Let me do it. So you have originally you have, it's the same thing. You have 2a minus 3b to the power of 5, right? I can write this as, let me change the bracket to a square bracket. 2a plus I would make my second thing in the in the binomial minus 3b to the power of 5. So this is my this is my first part, this is my second part. You understand? And how I have a plus sign. So when I do the expansion, I just need the first three terms now. So if I completely write it. 5 choose 0, 2a to the power of 5, minus 3b to the power of 0. Do you understand? That's what we do if the middle sign is minus. You make it belong to the second thing and make a plus in, in between. Plus 5 choose 1, 2a to the power of 4, minus 3b to the power of 1, plus 5 choose 2, 2a to the power of 3, minus 3b to the power of 2, plus dot, dot, dot. I'm not computing the rest. This is 1 times 2 to the power of 5 is 32a to the power of 5, and this is just 1 plus this is, I know it's five, two to the power of four is 16, a to the power of four, and this is just minus three B, plus what is five choose uh, two? Five choose two, five choose two is 10, two to the power of three is eight, a cube, and minus three to the power of two, um, minus three B, be careful there. Now you are computing with the minus sign. Huh? Minus 3b to the power of 2. So b to the power of 2 is b squared here. Minus 3 to the power of 2. That would give me a 9. Plus 9. 9b squared plus dot dot dot. This is 32a to the power of 5 plus 16 times 5 is, uh, sorry, not plus, not plus. Plus and this minus would make it minus. So I have 5 times, 16 times, 3. 240, a to the power of 4, b, plus 10 times, 8 times, 9. 720, a to the power of 3, b squared plus dot dot dot.
Is that clear? Kitni and Umasha, is that clear? Yes, miss. Okay. Yes, miss. Any questions up to now? Uh, miss? Yes. Will we get a fraction for a term? Okay. Shall we do one? Okay. Okay. Let's do one with, with a, let, let us do an expansion of a binomial where one of the things in the binomial is a fractional thing. Okay. So same thing. It's just that your terms would get simplified and there are fractions. I mean, you can cancel them. Let's do one example four. Write the first, again, let's just do three terms in the expansion, in the expansion, Okay, in the expansion, 3x squared minus 2 over x to the power of 5. Okay, it has a minus sign, one of the terms, one of the things in the binomial already has a power. And the other thing in the binomial is a fraction. So all kinds of different things going on in this uh, binomial, okay? So let us just slowly do it. The first thing you know that you have to do, you don't have to even write it if you can think about it in your head. You have to make this minus sign belong to the second thing. So it's minus two over X and think or think that there you have a plus sign in front. So let me write it here like that. 3x squared plus, so I will put a little bracket. So let me make this a square bracket. Otherwise, there are two similar brackets. Minus 2 over x to the power of 5. I need to write only the first three terms. So here we go. 3 choose 0. 3x squared to the power of 5 minus two over x to the power of zero. Miss? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it three or five choose zero? What's that? Uh, like five choose zero. Oh, sorry, five. <laughs> Thank you, Akiti. Yes, it's five. <laughs> How did you... Oh, because of that three I'm looking at, I think I took that three. It's a power here, five choose zero. Thank you, Akitni. And then five choose one, three X squared to the power of four drops by one, minus two over X to the power of one, plus five choose two, three X squared to the power of three, minus two over X to the power of two, plus, dot, 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 I don't need everything. Only the three first, first three terms. S equals, I know this is, I know this is one. I know this is five already. So that's just one. And then, woo, three to the power of five, three to the power, oops. Three to the power of, three to the power of five is 243 X to the power of, what, what is the power of X I get from this? I have X squared to the power of five, power of a power. What is this X to the power of? 10. 10, very good. You multiply the powers, X to the power of 10. And this is 
to the power of zero. This is just one again. Nothing comes from that. Plus binomial coefficient, three to the power of four, 81 x squared to the power of four is x to the power of eight. And then here minus two over x. Plus five choose two, what is five choose two? Five choose two is 10. 10, uh, three cube is I think 27. 27 x to the power of six uh, minus two squared is four over x squared plus dot, dot, dot. Just do it very carefully without making any mistake like I did over there. So my first term is just 243 x to the power of 10 my second term, if you look at it, this there is a minus sign here. So my whole term will be minus. And, and there are some simplifications. This one x can be uh, simplified there with the x to the power of eight. So that I get, you know, what is 81 times, 81 times five times two. Five times, 81 times two. 810 x to the power of seven, okay? Is this term plus or minus? It's That term is plus. Any, uh, I can cut, I can simplify x squared with this, it will become four, power four. 10 times, 27 times, thousand and eighty x to the power of four that's it plus dot 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 did you understand yes miss yes okay so that's how you do uh, when they ask you to find only the first few terms you just apply the theorem okay then one more thing you have to learn in this if I give you, if I tell you, I, I show you a certain by power of a binomial. Say I show you uh, 2x uh, plus 5 to the power of, um, to the power of, um, to the power of 15. Okay, that's too big. Let me make this one, then, then it'll be okay. Okay, 2x plus 1 to the power of 15. I ask you to find, I am not asking you to expand it in full. I'm not asking you to give the first few terms. I, If I ask you to give me a specific term in this expansion, now I can see that the, uh, only this term has X in it. So that you are going to have different powers of X in the terms. Can you find me, if I ask you to find me, the term, when you expand this, only the term that you, uh, that you get, find me the term in this expansion that has x to the power of say eight in it. The term that has x to the power of eight in it. So I'm just asking you to get me a certain one term in this expansion. This expansion will have 16 terms. Can you only find me the term out of these 16 terms, the term that will have x to the power of eight in it? How do you do that? Do you have to get the whole expansion and see which term has x to the power of eight? Or can we like be very smart and exactly find that term in this expansion. I'm just throwing it at you as a, as a problem for you to think. We are going to learn how to do this, but before we do that, can you think on your own? This, uh, the solution to this could start from this observation we made in, in the beginning. 
oops, my document is stuck. Okay. This observation, remember, we said we we observed that any term in your uh, expansion is made out of three things. Binomial coefficient, a power of a and a power of b. And the two powers of a and b uh, add up to n. Can you think? I have to figure out the term in this expansion that will result in x to the power of 8. So I can begin like this, don't you think? Whatever that term is, that term will also have three parts in it. It will have the binomial coefficient. And I know that the, uh, so it will be 15 and something. Without knowing where this term is, I don't know that, I don't know what that bottom number is. But so let me put a question mark there. Okay. So I'm, what am I trying to write? The term with x to the power of 8, the term that has x to the power of 8 in it, only that term. 15 something, I don't know yet what that is. But then it will have a power of 2 to the uh, a power of 2x. I don't know what that is yet. And it should have a power of 1. I don't know what that is yet. Doesn't this represent any term in this expansion? Any term in this expansion has this part. 15 some number, 2x to some power, 1 to some power. Now, I'm looking for the term that has x to the power of 8 in it. That means I can immediately figure out one of the question marks here. Which question mark can I figure out? This, this, or that. First question mark, second question mark, or third question mark can I figure out immediately because I am looking for the term that has x to the power of 8 in it. I can easily see, ah, oh, that question mark should be this. Which one is that? Teacher? Yes, Akitmi. Uh, can the uh, question mark under 15 and the question mark of 1 to the power be equal? Huh, very good. Okay. So, yes, 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 yes. Let me go to the binomial um, uh, uh, theorem, right? That's a nice observation that uh, Akitmi has done. Um, now, you have these two powers of a and b that this bottom number is either this or that. We'll write it down. n0, n choose 0 would be the same as n choose n. This is one, this is one, right? Due to the symmetry, what you have here, the bottom number is it could be either that power or this power. If you think uh, the term before this last term would be n choose n minus 1. Okay. Let me, let me uh, explain this from this. Do you see that 5 choose 0 is the same as 5 choose 5? And 5 choose 1 is the same as 5 choose 4. And 5 choose 2 is the same as 5 choose 3. We can generalize and say this, this bottom number could be either this power or this power, 5 or 0 could be this power or this power, 5 or 0, they are the same. This bottom number could be 4 or 1. Here it's 1, here it's 4. They are the same. It could be 4 or 1. Doesn't matter what you put. This bottom number could be 3 or 2. One of these two powers in your term. 
it could be three. There it's two. Out of three and two, here it's two, here it's three, and they are the same. Okay. Now, my question was, since I'm looking for the term that has x to the power of eight in it, I can immediately say one of these question, one of these question marks, what it should be, what number it should be. There is a missing number here. There is a missing number here. There is a missing number here. One of these numbers I can immediately fix because I am looking for the term that has x to the power of eight in it. Tell me what, now, what that is. This is not a difficult question I'm asking. Teacher, can yes. you say uh, 15 to 7? Wait, now how do you know this is 7? Uh, because 15 minus 7 gives 8. So 8 comes to 2x to the power 8. Why should that be 8? Because you should find x to the power 8. Ah, so let's begin there. We are looking for the we are looking for the term that has x to the power of eight in it. From this bracket, the, no x comes to to, to to this term. No x comes to this term. X comes only from this term, this middle thing, this middle bracket. So shouldn't this power be eight? I want this term to have x to the power of eight. Then shouldn't this question mark be eight? This question mark. This is where you start. This is where you start. Let me highlight it. That's eight. Because that's the first question mark you fill. You want the term that has x to the power of eight in it, then this power has to be eight. You fix it. Then if that is eight, what should this question mark be? The two should add up to 15. So this is the order. You first fill that one. Then you fill this one because you know that these two numbers have to add up to 15. Then what must this be? What must the second uh, power here be? What must it be? Seven. Quick. Seven. It must be seven. I couldn't have filled this question mark first. Because that comes from uh, this, this, this is determined from that. Because I fixed eight here, then this has to be seven. I couldn't have thought of this seven first. This C is where you start. This eight is where you start. This is seven. Now I did that. Once you have done those two, now you can easily fill this question mark. It could either be eight or seven. Does not matter. They both are the same. 15 choose eight is the same as 15 to 7. So it doesn't matter what you put here. Once those two are done, you fill this with either with 8 or with 7. You have figured out the term. Now you just have to compute it. Did you understand this? We'll write uh, the note for, for this. And then we can copy this as an example. Did you understand? We'll practice this. This is how you can find um, a certain particular term in the expansion. If they tell you, find the term with x to this power, then you can spot, you can just, just figure that term out. Is this clear? Yes, miss. Yes, okay. Let's write this. Uh, put, a, put a subtopic under binomial theorem. Maybe under binomial theorem. Put a subtopic finding a required term in a binomial expansion. Finding a required term, a term, a single term we are finding, a required term in a binomial expansion.
Okay, let's start with that example. I'm starting with an example. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before we write that example, let's put a red star and make a note of uh, this. Uh, make a note of this. Uh, put a red star and write. In binomial coefficients, if you have say n choose r, it's same as n choose n minus r. This is what we just said. Example. For example, if I say five choose uh, one, is same as five choose what? The sim this is the symmetry. Five choose one is same as five choose four. These two will add up to five. Remember? If I say twelve choose uh, nine is same as 12 choose what? Twelve choose three. Very good. Uh, seven choose zero is same as seven choose what? Seven choose seven. Good. One more, this is just simple, right? Um, eight choose three is same as eight choose what? Eight choose five. Very good, okay. Now, we are, because we are using that in this. Okay, now let's write, do an example. Example, this is an example of finding a required term. Let's write that down. Find the term Oops, sorry. Find the term that has x to the power of 8 in the expansion. What was the expansion? 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 to the power of 15. Okay. This is how you do it. So let me write it out. You, you copy what I'm writing. You say the term that has x to the power of eight in it is, I know this must be 15. I put a question mark here. 2x, I put a question mark here. One, I put a question mark here. Then I figure out each question mark. I'll do that in the next step, how I figure out. I start with this. 15 question mark. You can do it here itself. Since it's the example I'm showing you. I start with, this is what I can figure out first. It has to be eight. So this is what you start with. You can't start with any other thing. You can't. Okay. Once that is figured out, then you can do these two. So you can put eight here. And if this is eight, this must be uh, seven. And now you can find it. So let us find it. 15 choose eight. eight. Two to the power of eight. That's just one. Whew, you get a huge number. One million six hundred and forty seven thousand three hundred and sixty x to the power of eight is your term. In this expansion, the term that has x to the power of eight is that. Example two. Can I uh, turn the page? Can I 
to another page? Yes, miss. Example two. Find the term containing containing x to the power of 17 in the expansion of x plus 2 to the power of 25. Find the term containing x to the power of 17 in the expansion of this. So you would say the term that has x to the power of what? 17 equals. This should take the form 25 choose question mark x to the power of question mark 2 to the power of question mark. I have three question marks to figure out. Since I'm looking for the term x to the power of 17, that has to be 17. So now I can write here itself. No, let, let me just, so. This is where I start, this is 17. If that is 17, I can put 17 here also. And then two to the power of, uh, what is this? 25 minus 17, eight. Let's find that. Don't do it, okay? Just, just leave it at that. <laughs> Whatever that is, big numbers you get. So this is, I mean, okay. This is just to show you, this is just to show you, oops, I'm pressing buttons off the keyboard here and it's, um, let me write here, you can, you, this can be 17 or eight, this number or this number, you have the choice, both give you the same thing. I'll, I'll leave a say, I'll leave a space to write the answer, it's your, you get a huge coefficient, okay. Example three, here is the most challenging example. Find the coefficient oh find the coefficient of the term containing containing x to the power of 4 in the expansion 2x minus 1 over x to the power of 8. I want you to find the coefficient of the term containing x to the power of 4. So first, let's find the x to the power of 4 term. And then, then we can just take out the coefficient in the end. Okay. So let's find the term. The term that has x to the power of 4 in it. What's my format? 8 choose question mark. 2x choose, sorry, 2x to the power of question mark. This is minus, so I include it to the second part of the binomial, minus 1 over x question mark. Now this is different to the earlier examples because there is x in this and there is x in this too. So a combination of the powers here, because bo from both this, you would get x powers. The result should be x to the power of four. What combination should, so you have to think of both of these simultaneously. So the possibilities for these two are, so you start with, both of these, you have to start with both of these together. 
Here are the possibilities. The two powers could be, uh, this power is eight now, so it could be eight and zero, seven and one, six and two, uh, five and three, four and four, three and five, and so on. You, you get my point. Those are the different combinations that can that can go here. Which pair, you have to pick one, a pair now. You can't start with just one. You have to think of both of them together. Which pair would give you x to the power of four? So Because the x's will cancel. I don't need to write all of this. I, the, already the, the right pair is here. Can you see what it is? Which one it is? Six and two. Six and two. Very good, Akitmi. Umasha, do you see that too? Because the, the, it, in the top, you have to have two, uh, four more to get x to the power of four. Where after canceling, the number here should be four more than the number here because uh, this x is in the bottom. When they cancel, to give you four, this must be six and this must be two. Do you see that? So this is the right pair. Then you can write, okay, so it should be eight. I can put either six or two, two x to the power of six here, minus one over x to the power of two. Let's simplify this. Eight choose six. Twenty-eight. Two to the power of six. 64 x to the power of 6 minus 1 square is 1 and x square. My x square, this x square will cancel with this 6, giving me 4. 28 times 64, 1792 x to the power of 4. And then I can say, therefore, the coefficient. They're just asking me for the coefficient of the term. So that's the coefficient of the x to the power of 4 term is 1,792. Did you understand that? Did you understand that? Yes, miss. Okay. Any questions? Umasha, are you there? Yes, miss. Okay. Is it clear, Masha? Yes, miss. Okay. Uh, let us try. Mm, let us try a challenging one. Or oh, can I give you? Let me see. Okay. Let me Okay. This uh, this is a question from the from the textbook. This question number nine. This one nine. Okay. This is exercise four C. Question number nine. Can you do this on your own? Number nine. 
you can copy it or if you have your book you can just say exercise 4c number 9 and can you do these two parts Yes. What do you have in that? Series. Series. Who gave you? So once you are done with part one, once you are done finding the first three terms, uh, you tell me what they are. It's all broken seating. Oh. Green color. Yes, it's broken. It's broken. Oh. He says green is broken. Oh. Oh. So they are all broken. Yeah. Let me see. Look, see, you see this green? Yeah. This green is broken. Green means broken? You see this green light? Ah, the green light, yes. It's changing. It's changing. It's like a rainbow. Yeah. It's like rainbow colors. Yeah. Does that mean it's broken? Yeah. I don't think so. You see this? This oh. green? Yeah. This is green and this green was green. Yes. I like it. Yes, I like it too. I will keep it. You keep it, yes. They are not broken. How is first part? Miss, I'm in the second part. Ah, okay. Can I know the first part, uh, the three terms? Let's check with the, so let's check whether you you have, you both have gotten the same three terms. So what's the first term? Uh, X to the power 12. X to the power of 12. Correct, Umasha? Miss, I'm still doing the first part. Okay, okay. okay. Then just, just uh, continue doing. Yes, I brought you apple juice. Did Tatama give you?
can we check part one now umasha one minute miss okay so uh umasha it's just the first three terms huh? are you doing the whole expansion no miss only the first three terms okay. right Let me also do it in the Six two two. Fifteen. Right. First term is x to the power of twelve. Second term sine would be minus. 1x, 1x cancels here. So 6x to the power of 9. Is that your second term? Yes, miss. Third term, sine is plus. Fifteen x to the power of 6. Correct? Yes, miss. Masha? Yes, Miss. Same. Yes. Very good. Part two. Find the coefficient of x cubed term in the same expansion. x cubed term. So let's find the x cubed term. Six. Choose question mark x squared to the power of question mark minus 1 over x to the power of question mark. I have to start with these two question marks together because they both have x's in them. Their combination should give me x cube. Here are my could be Six zero five one two three three two four and so on. Now there is a square here, so mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you see it? One five zero six. These are all the combinations. Which one fits here to give you x cube? Don't say it. Uh, if you have figured it out, can you drop a message privately to me?
let's try to get me Masha. Three. What's that, Masha? Three and three. Very good. Three and three. Three and three. Is what would is what would uh, fit there. So six three six choose three x squared to the power of three minus one over x to the power of three would be. Six choose. Oops. Six choose three is twenty. This is twenty. This is x to the power of six minus one cube is minus one over x cube. Then this can cancel three from here. So it's minus twenty x cube. They're asking for the coefficient. Therefore, right? 